What have we here? Bob Weigel Sound Doctor, and this is a Bauer organ. Very, very rare. I don't know how many of these they made, but it kind of uh, has some unique looking parts in it. And uh, your bass volume, and just tabs for a bunch of stuff, and even a voltage voltage selector. Um, can you see that? I don't know. Anyway, um, keys almost look like this one from a clavinet. They're about the same thickness on the front, but there's more rounding on the edge of this one, as you see. It's kind of like just a little more rounded right in the front zone there. Um, but I imagine in a pinch you could make one of those caps work because it looks like the rigging is all the same. They're exactly the same length, aren't they? No, actually the back's different. The back goes back further. But I think it would work. Yeah, it just it just goes back further. Really of no consequence. You could saw it off, I guess, for that matter. Amazing how many varieties of those they made. Okay, um, <clears throat> this thing uh, just had some bad caps, things like, you know, yeah, it's looking pretty bulgy there. See the weird bulge? That one can go bye-bye. And um, broken potentiometer back here, which I found out is what operates this multi-tone reverb. Without it, we've got a... And with it, we have just a... little um, decay envelope of the high end to make it sound reverb -esque, I guess. So um, anyway, we'll show you what it looks like with the top on here in a minute. Not really much to show here, your standard kind of architecture. I just wanted you to see the parts of this because they are pretty pretty rare, I guess. You'll probably never see the inside one of these again in your life. So look while you can. <laughs> Ooh, ah, e, ah, uh, ugh. Okay, let's uh, put top on. All right, there it is. Thing was sitting in its plywood foundation. It has a box that goes around that, and of course the top. And <clears throat> I didn't have this stuff screwed in before it was just hanging there. So got all that tagged on. Found the screw for that even rolling around inside. So I think it's all complete. Cords go through a couple holes in a slot back there. Kind of unique. Hmm. I'm assuming that thing must set another way because otherwise it's going to hit the bottom there. <laughs> I might have to bend those up inside a bit. And uh, mix clarinet, trombone. Note the. Uh, Clarinet isn't affected by the the multi-tone reverb. It must have uh, not the harmonics you need. Nor do those. Nor does that. Or they're just routed through and those aren't. I don't know. reverb can, you understand, that's just a uh, envelope extending some harmonics. So. Continues after you turn the switch off. Also, that's the way that one works. <sighs> Let's see. Contact that needs a little bit
bass is pretty plain, Jane, but uh, you at least have some things you can stack down there. Get some different sounds. And I'm trying to figure out what the difference is between these. I still don't get that. <laughs> like they all are pretty much a continuum. Huh. Now I'm not sure what the deal is there. I don't see any way to change the layering, so I'm a little confused by that. It was a nice thought. Maybe they just wanted it to look really cool. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, well, that's the Bauer Vivante. Bauer Combo Vivante, or Vivant, or I don't know. Vivant, Vivant, hmm, how else could you pronounce that? <laughs> Vivant. Well, that's um, different uh, for sure. In terms of its looks, uh, sound-wise, pretty similar to uh, some other ones I've heard, but uh, the reverb thing is kind of a nice feature. Don't always have that. <laughs> anyway, Bob Weigel, Sound Doctrine, signing off.